go. Welcome to the latest episode of the Good Gram Show with me, Chris Goodram. Right. Okay, this afternoon. Um, tasting of uh, meant to do for quite a while. Um, for no other reason than simply because, well, all oh, gone. It's amazing how whiskey just does not stay very long in this house at all. I mean, I have no idea why. You know, it just it just comes in and then poof, it's gone. Anyway. Um, Right, uh, enough, enough of the silliness. Uh, what I'm going to be looking at today is um, a, a range called Bamor Tempest, which was released um, about four years ago now, or the, the initial bottling was released four years ago. Um, and I'd love to have done, obviously, one to four, but unfortunately one was, was so good that it just kind of got, got drunk. <laughs> and it was long before I started doing... Uh, um, these uh, these videos for your uh, delectation as they say um so basically uh, all i've got is um two three and four so um it's gonna have to do isn't it really um now i mean now Bumor, um i love Bumor. i really do love Bumor. old Bumor, oh, just stunning stunningly mellow has that wonderful kind of um palm of violet sort of dusty kind of character and um when I first started in the whiskey industry, I guess over a decade ago now, um, Bumor was was the hairy ass styler. You know, it was kind of like it was macho, smoky, big, hairs on your chest kind of stuff. You know, really, really intense. Um, and I loved it. I, that, I just absolutely loved that kind of um, that that sort of character. Um, but like a lot of whiskies over the years it has its character has changed and it's now a lot softer it's a lot more caramel a lot you know, one could argue a little it's gone a bit girly as they say you know um it's no it's not the macho beastie of uh, of old it has to be said but like i said um i think it was about four years ago they released batch one of of the tempest and it was kind of almost like a throwback whiskey to, to the, the old fashioned style of Bamor. Um, I mean, A, it was bottled at cast strength um, and it just it just had a beautiful intensity to it and, and uh, sold quite a lot of it in the shop in actual fact because it just sort of like kicked the butt of the, uh, of, of the 12 year old, it has to be said. And to, to a certain extent, the 18 as well, um, because both of those had gone down the, the girly route, should we say. So, um, you know, it, it was it was a whiskey that I really, really liked. And then, obviously, each year they've released another batch of it, and each batch has been subtly different. And each batch has... Well, I'm not going to ruin it for you, you know. We'll, we'll, we'll obviously get onto that bit in, in due course. But needless to say, um, uh, like I said, it's, uh, it's a, a small batch release every year, so there's always going to be differences. But... You know, one hoped that the sort of the high standards would would be kept up from the first bottling, but um, uh, as we don't have that one to compare, we just uh, we'll have to make do with two, three, and four. So I guess that's an, enough of the introductory waffle, um, and um, well, I'll introduce the lineup, then, shall we? Right. So this afternoon we'll kick off with uh, batch number two, which was bottled at. Um, 56% and was released in 2011 as you can see all three were um, aged exclusively in American oak casks um, batch number two was bottled at if I can see this right 55.6 and released um, a year later and this one is uh, the current uh, release batch number four Bottled at 55.1, apparently, according to the label, all first fill American oak, uh, which I suspect the other two are as well as. So um, I think this will be quite an interesting little comparison. Um, I think you can certainly see from the colour, um, it has got a lot darker. Um, so just purely from looking at it, you would postulate that there was probably a I said, first fill American oak in there more refill American oak uh, used in the uh, in the bottling number two but um, we shall see when we uh, when we get on to tasting them then so let's start at the beginning
Right, okay, so batch number two, 56%. Let's, uh, let's see what the nose gives us. Nice and dusty, quite citric, lots of, lots of lemon, a little bit of lime. Gentle, dusty peat. I mean, I remember batch one was, was like I said, very much in the style of the old Bamore 12 year old. Lots and lots of peat smoke, lots and lots of intensity. It's pleasant, it doesn't have that intensity, it certainly doesn't have the intensity of bottling number one. But there's a little bit of phenolic, a little bit of grassiness, a little bit of creamy oak, just sort of slightly at the edges. Hmm, very, very grassy in fact, perhaps now. A little bit of candied orange, almost, almost boiled sweetie kind of note. I mean, certainly I think if you were um, nosing this blind you possibly think there might be a bit of refill sherry at work but we obviously know there isn't but it has that sort of boiled sweety refilly sherry kind of sweetness a um, bit of barley I mean you know not a bad whiskey but a mild squall I think was what um, I think it was Jim Murray I think said that about it and it certainly Certainly not exactly what you call a tempest, and certainly wasn't as, as, as impressive as bottling number one. Bit of bit of coal dust now, yeah, a bit of anthracite maybe. Ah. more smoke. Maybe not a hairy beast but opens up with a sort of um, lemon cough drops, some medicinal notes, a little bit of um, burnt wood. That's, the citrus is, is hanging in there and, and that is one of the characteristics of the more. It has a lot of citrus, a lot of lemony notes and um, so a nice smokiness, a sort of kind of peat meets coal kind of smoke character. Um, quite dry, you know, a nice degree of alcohol, not not sort of OTT. I don't, personally, I don't think it would need any water adding to it. Quite a dry, quite a salty finish, um, and yeah, some some nice peat. Um, like I said, not quite old Bamore and not quite um, as tempestuous as uh, the first edition, but. Yeah, not not a bad whiskey at all, I don't think. Right, okay, so on to batch number three. Um, and like I said, uh, if you look at the colours, I think you can safely say that as they're progressing on, a little bit more uh, first fill um, bourbon oak being used. And this is possibly where I think not the trouble as, as, as line, but I think that because Bamora has got softer, more caramel, they probably are using more first fill American oak. Um, and I, it, it just, it's, it, like I said, it's just kind of taking the, 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 the sort of masculine edge off, uh, off the whiskey. But anyway, enough of, uh, enough of that. Let's, uh, let's, let's see what number two, or batch three, should we say, gives us. More brinier, a little bit more spice, a little herbal spice, a bit of cardamom possibly. Not a great deal of, of peat, um, quite lightly peated. Like I said, a lot more, a lot more herbally um, than um, batch two. Not getting a real, a huge amount of oak, quite a bit of saline character, a little bit of, almost a little bit of violet -y peat, um, which you often tend to find in, in Bamore, certainly as Bamore gets older you tend to get that sort of 
dusty a palm of Isla character coming through. Again, fresh citrus, not quite so lemony, but you know, that has that sort of citrusy sort of edge to the aromas that um, that mingle in quite nicely with the um, with the, the herbal element. Um, getting a bit of oak now, a little bit of sort of butteriness. softer, sweeter, more barley, more caramels, more vanillins, um, lovely aftertaste, again that sort of herbally, bog myrtly, um, camphory um, kind of character comes through, quite salty on the aftertaste, again not exactly a huge amount of peat, no real little bit of cold, dusty, peaty sort of kind of thing going on, but A little bit of medicinal note. Yeah, it's cool. It, it, you can see where we're going with this, can't you? I hope. Um, it's started off, like I said, very much in the old-fashioned style, and as we're getting on, it's like Bermore is just, it's just moving. You know, it's moving into the more, the more vanillins and softer, sweeter kind of style. Again, as a standalone whiskey. It's not bad. It's not, not a bad bottling uh, by any stretch of the imagination. Um, but, you know, it's kind of... It's leaving me a little bit cold, it has to be said. I can mend your fears. Right, and on to batch number four, as you can see. Uh, this is all first fill American oak. Um, certainly the colour kind of gives that one away. Lovely... Uh, um, Lovely glow to it, so let's see what those gives us on this. Denser, dustier. Smells a little bit older in actual fact. Um, none of that sort of youthful fresh citrus character. A lot more dusty oak, um, dusty spice. Again, we're not talking huge gobbins of peat again. It's, it's again very really dusty, you know, you kind of get the idea, it's just dusty. Um, as there is a bit of kind of almost honey lemon cough sweet kind of thing. Um, not quite lockets, but you know, in that kind of sort of style. A um, little bit of dusty violet. A little bit of saltiness starting to come through now, trying to freshen. Uh, along with a little bit of medicinal herbs. But oh, there's a lot of oak on this. It really is big, dusty oak, you know. It's got a. It's getting a bit grainy now, um, the sort of spices. I mean, I, I, if I'd have smelt this blind, I really would be, be hard pushed to say this was the more. It really is very unbemore, you know. Palette. A lot of caramels again, um, toasted caramel, kind of toffee, um, barley, a um, little bit of nice fresh finish though. That, that the citrus does come through on the finish. Practically no peat whatsoever at all. It is just so lightly peated. There's a, a little bit of a dustiness um, on the aftertaste. Uh, a little bit of sort of camphory kind of herbs. Um, but that is just a huge mouthful of oak, um, and you know, um, again, 
taken in its kind of own right, you know, ignoring the fact that we've just tasted it against um, two of the, the other bottlings, it's not a bad whiskey. You know, it, you, you can't, crit well, you can't criticise it. Yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm just doing that, I suppose. Um, but it is not Bamore. It is just so... It is just, ugh, just, just too much oak, you know. Um, and, yeah, as much as I love oak, and I really do love oak, um, I wanted more from this, you know. I wanted more from the Tempest, you know. I wanted tempestuousness, for God's sake. And what did I get? Anyway, um, like I said, you know, on, on, on its as a standalone, not a bad whiskey. Um, just in the general context of the of the range, um, I, I think it's probably the most disappointing of the of the four, or of the, certainly of the three that we've tasted this afternoon. Um, so, so there you have it. Um, kind of almost summed it up, but I'll um, let's 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 go to the summing up then, shall we? Come Right, okay, so um, let's sum this little tasting up. Um, big sigh. It's... No, I mean... Um, I mean, Bamore itself, um, I mean, they, they specify their, their malts petered to 25 parts per million, which, in the grand scheme of things, is yeah, moderately petered, I suppose. I mean, when you think about it, you've got, you know, unpetered at one end, zero peat parts per million, um, at the other end of the the, the normal islas, forgetting um, the, the the behemoth that's optimal, you have um, Art Began and the Freud up around the fifties. So it's kind of midway, and and, and, I, and that was one of the things, um, a bit like Colila. Uh, Colila again was just kind of like sort of a mid a midpoint in the sort of you know the peated um, hierarchy, shall we say? But the thing I found about Bamore is, like I said, it always had a big smoky character. Um, I assume part of that was down to the fact that um, I guess they used certainly higher level peat, which has uh, or had or has well the peat has uh, a lot more um, uh, carbohydrate um, mass. Uh, it burns a lot, sort of smokier, quicker. Um, not as, and it doesn't you know create as much. Um, phenology as say some of the, 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 the oilier deeper layers of peat and certainly when when I visited the distillery back in oh, when was that now? 2003 I think uh, when I spent some time working up at Brook um, uh, you could certainly we ser I certainly saw the, um, the kiln in, in action and you know it give, appeared to give off quite a lot of smoke um, I, I think they broke the, the, the peat up quite small and, quite, and, and thus, again, got, got a lot of smoke out of it. Obviously, um, not, all their peat, peat, uh, not all their peat, not all their barley is peated on site, obviously, because they just don't have the capacity for that, but um, certainly a, a, a reasonable proportion of it is. And um, whether they've changed the specifications, whether they, you know, the, the, the commercial... Um, Peated malt that they're getting for, from, say, Port Ellen, uh, is um, uh, uses that they're using different types of peat now. Using, uh, who knows? I mean, this is the thing, you know, with peated malts. There is there's so many variables, um, and it doesn't take an awful lot for 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 the the, the character of your peat to actually change. I mean, you know, uh, about a year or so back now, I wrote an article for for the um, uh, for our magazine. Um, Exchange magazine, which I subsequently put in my uh, newsletter about the whole business of peat and its composition and all this, and you know when you start actually looking into what's essentially a, an organic matter, uh, which you think peat is peat, but it isn't. It's you know really quite complex stuff. But anyway, I'm probably I'm kind of digressing here, I suppose. Um, what I, what I should do is sum this up, right? Okay, look, I still like Bamore. Old Bamore, I just kill for. It's just stunning stuff, you know. You very rarely come across a bad bottling of, say, 25, 30 year old Bamore. Uh, and I've tasted a fair few, um, and um, it just has this wonderful maturity um, and this sort of dense smokiness, you know. Uh, and, and that's what I want, you know. 
that's what I remember when I first got into whiskey, what the moor was all about. It was about the smokiness, it was the, the intensity, and it's gone. It's just, you know, it's just too nice. You know, and I don't want nice. I don't want Bamor to be nice. I want Bamor to be windswept. I want Bamor to sort of like be masculine and, you know, um, slap me in the head with, with, with smoky peat briquettes and all that kind of stuff, you know. And like I said, batch one was, was not quite a, a ringer for, for, for old Bamor, but it was pretty damn close in my opinion. Two, yeah, all right, okay. Hinting at it, um, three and four have just gone down the route of, of, of kind of um, modern but more overly oaked, um, overly caramelled, sweetened, soft, girly. Yeah, you know, it's it's not right at the end of the day. Um, uh, but like I keep saying, you know, the, the quality of the whiskies are. Are very very good you know uh, and I'm not arguing about the quality of the spirit that they're producing it at uh, Bamore at all um, what I am saying is that I don't think it's as good as what it was um, you know uh, people may well sort of um, you know argue with me on, on, on that little point but that's that's my personal opinion I don't think that the spirit is anywhere near as interesting as what it was ten years ago um, a minimum you know um, so this is what I think they should do. I personally think they should sort of go back to maybe upping the peating level, maybe that's what's required, 5%, maybe take it up to sort of 30%, 35%, um, ditch the, the huge amount of new oak, uh, of first fill American oak that you're using, go back to using refill American oak, get the crispness, get the freshness, the brininess, the intense smokiness back, um, and and that's that's my personal opinion. Others may well argue and say, well, you don't know what you're talking about, um, but you know that's that's what I think. I think it's all got a little bit too overly oaked, um, and you know that's that. Like I keep saying, that's that's my personal opinion, and I think I will I will stick to that one. So um, I, I guess. I keep going on and on and on and on about this for absolutely ages, but I'm sure you get completely bored of me going on about it. So um, I think all that's basically left to say is, um, well, I hope you've uh, enjoyed uh, watching this episode of the show. I hope um, that you will uh, look into Bamor. I mean, just don't take my word for it. Taste it yourself. See what you think. Um, certainly go and get yourself the 12-year-old if you can afford it and find it. Buy some older uh, editions uh, or uh, older age statements of Bamor, um, and uh, and just just see what you think. Make your own mind up. Um, so anyway, uh, I guess that's about it for this afternoon. Um, so all that's left to say is good drumming and good afternoon. <laughs>